When we invest in ourselves, we all shine. Together, we are black beyond measure. Hit me. Listen to me now. Is you with me now? The biggie, biggie bounce. I know you dig the way I switch my style. Holla, holla. I'm Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach, and it's time to get wealthy. You're going to learn exactly what you need to know and do to finally achieve the level of financial success that you desire and you deserve. Black women are starting businesses at a fast clip. In fact, the fastest growing of any demographic in the US, more than 2.7 million businesses. And yet, if we look underneath the hood, and at the bottom line, what we find is that the average business owner is at $44,000 revenue annually. So what do they need to know in order to scale beyond seven figures? Well, here's what they don't want you to know. Here are the three things they don't want you to know. First is that you've got to work on the business and not in the business. And secondly, your price actually conveys your value. And, in it, and finally, that teamwork makes the dream work. And that's why I'm excited to have a conversation with our next guest, because she is the media monetization men mentor, and she's showing women how they can scale to seven figures and beyond. Dr. Avis Jones DeWeaver, or Dr. Avis, as she's so fondly known, is an expert in all areas. She is a political commentator and was a nonprofit executive. And it's when she shifted from a nonprofit to an entrepreneur that she herself was able to scale and build a seven figure business. And that's why I'm so excited to have her on Get Wealthy today. So welcome to our program, Dr. E. Well, I wanted to have a conversation with you today around this whole issue. I mean, numbers don't lie, right? And that is that Black women are starting businesses, but far too many of them are able to really create a sustainable business. So mm -hmm. I want to start there with why you knew you had to make this shift to an entrepreneur and what you learned. Well, you know, honestly, I am a second generation entrepreneur. My father was a business owner uh, even years before I was born. And so I grew up sort of watching him live his dream and admiring that. Uh, but it really wasn't until I made the shift, as you mentioned, from nonprofit executive, where I kind of left a job for the first time in my life without having that non, that next job set up, that I took the leap uh, to start my own business. And, uh, you know, it was my way of not only living that dream of emulating my father in that way, but actually continuing to do work that actually meant something deeply to me. And so it was really about me literally following that sort of yearning inside of me uh, to do work that's meaningful, to make a difference on people's lives, but at the same time, create for myself an opportunity that literally has no limits. And to me, that is really the beauty of entrepreneurship. You're not limited by others' perceptions of your value, of you know how much you should get this year versus next year. Literally, if you make the decision, you can make twice as much next year as you made this year and beyond. So that to me was very exciting. Uh, and that's really why I went down this path and I, I could never imagine going back. 
So, you know, I, I, I love the way you frame that, that there is no limits, because one of the other side of that coin is what is the catalyst for so many black women starting businesses? And interestingly enough, a uh, recent study by UBS, United Bank of Switzerland, really looked at high net worth multicultural individuals, high net worth meaning people with investable assets of a million dollars and more mm -hmm. or more. And one of the things that they found for black women specifically is that many of them didn't necessarily weren't full entrepreneurship entrepreneurs, but they had some business income, mm -hmm. right? Which means, you know, we have these side hustles going on. And so uh, I guess the question becomes, why do you think that is? You know, I think that it's, it's a multifaceted answer to that question. Number one, black women are very committed to the workplace. So I'm not surprised that a large number of them had their businesses as a side hustle. Uh, we quite frankly are the leading demographic of women who are participants in the labor force. There's no woman in America that's mo more likely to work than black women. And the reality is, is that we've always been in this labor force before they were calculating those data, right? We've been the American labor force forever. So we know what it's like to work, but we also understand uh, that we're not necessarily being treated fairly in those spaces. We understand that we face not only a, a gendered wage gap, we face a race and gendered race gap, wage gap that leaves us even further behind, especially this year. It's really disturbing to see that number take a horrible plunge uh, where we're only now calculated to make about 58 cents to the dollar of the typical white male in the labor market. And so we see that we're not getting paid fairly. We get that we are uh, committed to the workplace, that we're working, that we're ambitious, uh, that we want to get that next promotion. Yet we oftentimes see other people get promoted over us when we believe that we're doing a lot of the work that they are taking credit for. There are so many reasons uh, in the toxic environments like that oftentimes that we feel like we cannot leave our entire future in the hands of this organization that we know is not treating us fairly. And so a lot of us are looking into entrepreneurship either as a side hustle or eventually as something that we will do full time as a way to really get properly compensated for our genius and for our work ethic, eth effort in a way that we quite frankly are not actually receiving when we're in exclusively a traditional work environment. Woo, now that was a lot, but it is a lot, right? Yes. From one black woman to another. So Absolutely. <laughs> what, what I really want us to focus on in our conversation with you today is what is the solution? So on Get Wealthy, we have a framework that we use for financial success. And I want to put those solutions in that framework of mindset, strategy, and execution. Mm -hmm. So the let's start at mindset, because I really feel like you are a, a great example of someone who made a shift in mindset from entrepreneur from from like a nonprofit entrepreneur to CEO. So mm -hmm. so the question I have for you is in order for black women to go beyond that being a side hustle and truly scale their business, what kind of mindset set shift do they need to make to be successful? That's an excellent question. You know, I really think that the first mindset shift you need to make is this idea that you deserve more. I mean, literally, if you're watching this right now, just repeat out loud, I deserve more. I mean, I think that's really a fundamental thing that we have to embrace as Black women. Just think about it. Culturally, we are so attuned with everybody else's needs. We are there as as wives, we're there as mothers, we're there as sisters and daughters taking care of elders. We really focus our lives on taking care of other people. And oftentimes we don't even give ourselves the luxury of really going after fully what we want and deserve. And I want you to know that the beautiful thing to me about entrepreneurship that you need to really expand your mind to is understanding that you deserve to make 
that extra six figures, multi six figures, seven figures even that you can make uh, as an entrepreneur. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. And really, that's kind of a revolutionary thought when you think about it, because our culture, I believe, is oftentimes very much bought into this idea that money itself is evil. And so we sort of not don't even go after all that we are capable of receiving because we almost feel like we'll receive some judgments if we are quote unquote too successful. And so we have to reject that and understand that really money is gonna allow us to be able to create the lifestyle that we want for ourselves, for our children. It's gonna allow us when it's managed correctly and we know how to grow it in the way that you teach your clients to do, we're gonna be able to leave a legacy for our children and provide intergenerational wealth so that the next generation does not have to start from ground zero, like unfortunately has often been the case in our community. We're able to give generously to those organizations and those individuals that we care about. And a lot of the problems, quite frankly, that we have in our community, we could collectively solve if we had enough wealth in our community to be able to invest in ourselves in that way. And so trying to distance ourselves from the lie that money is evil, trying to allow ourselves to embrace the idea that yes, you deserve more and it's okay to go out there and get it, and really come to the notion also, thirdly, that you don't have to do it all alone. I think that's another thing that holds a lot of Black women entrepreneurs back because statistically speaking, the overwhelming majority of our business are solopreneur um, projects. And the bottom line is, if your business is just, just you, there is only one you, there is only 24 hours in a day, right? And so there's only so much that you can do. When you are ready to scale, you are gonna to need to go beyond the limits of what you can individually do. So understanding that investing in team is gonna allow you to get more once we sort of expand our minds to accept that, all of those things allow us to get on a path that will take us to and through seven figures. Woo, you know, I thought about Beyonce's church girl and a lot of the controversy that's going on about that. And so part of yeah. it is those beliefs that we hold and, you know, that our, even our circle, right, cheers on that behavior. And yes. we don't recognize that in many cases, it's not serving us. And, and, and so, you know, the, the, I love the way you frame that because those limited beliefs, I believe, is why that number is where it is in terms of average revenues. And, and I do think you touched on another part uh, of it, and that is that it takes teamwork. Absolutely. Right? And uh, I think so often for Black women specifically, we are so accustomed to doing everything in our own strength that we haven't made that shift. We don't understand that it's not the how, it's the who. Boom. And exactly. in order for us to really be able to uh, uh, accelerate, right, our financial mm -hmm. growth and truly be not a solopreneur, a CEO, but a CEO, that what is required is for us to give up the reins. So, woo! I hope our folks are enjoying this because when we come back, I want to go to the next part of that success framework and it is strategy. So folks don't go anywhere. I hope you're enjoying my conversation with Dr. Avis, the media monetization mentor. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. When we invest in ourselves, we all shine. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure. Does it get better than never getting lost? Does it get better than not parallel parking yourself? Alexa, ask Smart Feed to feed the dog. Does it get better than feeding your dog from 50 miles away? Yes, it does. At Buick, we see a future that's even better. Because the life-enhancing innovations you've never even dreamed of, Buick is dreaming of them every day. Hi, I'm Dr. Jackie Hood-Martin, and I have a question for you. Ever feel as if your life is teetering and the weight and pressure of the world is consistently on your shoulders? Well, let me tell you, living a balanced life isn't easy. Join me each Tuesday on Black Star Network for a balanced life with Dr. Jackie. We'll laugh together, cry together, pull ourselves together, and cheer each other on. So join me 
for new shows each Tuesday on Black Star Network, A Balanced Life with Dr. Jackie. Hatred on the streets, a horrific scene, a white nationalist rally that descended into deadly violence. White people are losing their damn minds. As an angry pro Trump mob storms the U.S. Capitol, we've seen shock. We're about to see the rise of what I call white minority resistance. We have seen white folks in this country who simply cannot tolerate black folks voting. I think what we're seeing is the inevitable result of violent denial. This is part of American history. Every time that people of color have made progress, whether real or symbolic, there has been what Carol Anderson at Emory University calls white rage as a backlash. This is the rise of the Proud Boys and the Boogaloo Boys. America, there's going to be more of this. Here's all the Proud Boys, guys. This country is getting increasingly racist in its behaviors and its attitudes because of the fear of white people. The fear that they're taking our jobs, they're taking our resources, they're taking our women. This is white fear. Welcome back, everyone. This is Get Wealthy, and today we're talking about getting wealthy through entrepreneurship. And I'm so excited because we are having a conversation with Dr. Avis, someone who finally said to herself, I've got to make the shift to entrepreneur and truly a CEO and scale the seven-figure business. And so guess what? We want to know exactly how she did it, and that's why she she's here. So, Dr. Avis, my next question for you is strategy. Yes. Right. So I know that there are audiences listening to us and they're wondering, wow, seven figures. Can I even scale to six? I'm only at 44,000. I have barely made six. And so I want to talk about from your own experience as someone, uh, and that's why I love having this conversation because you're someone that done it yourself, not, you know, sitting here, you know, talking about this is what you could do. So (laughs) I want to get a little personal with you. Okay. So in terms of strategy, here you are, this nonprofit executive. I mean, we see you in the media girl talking about politics and, everything and you're successful and yet you knew that there was more for you so Mm -hmm. what strategy did you take to to accelerate your own business you know i think it's important for people to understand that if you're at forty four thousand today or even less than that understand that you don't have to be there next year or the year after that or the year after that you can greatly grow your business And I found for me, what really helped me to take a quantum leap in my revenue generation was focus, focus. One of the biggest mistakes that I find with a lot of the entrepreneurs that I work with is that they are doing a lot of different things. Like they are, I wouldn't say they're the master of all trades, but they are, for example, focusing on a lot of different things in their business. And they're trying to sell this and that and this and that and this. And I focus primarily with service professionals, by the way. And what I have found to be most successful for me and what I teach my clients to do, which has led to great revenue leaps with them, is to really hone your focus on one primary high ticket offer. You know, it's so much easier to make huge revenue leaps when you are selling something at a much higher price point. So just for example, think if you're selling something that a service, for example, that costs at least $10,000 for a company or another person to access you only need to sell 10 of those to make $100,000. Now, if that if you're selling stuff that's like $100 each, okay? <laughs> now, we're going to have to sell significantly more, right? About 1,000 of those to get $100,000. So, just the issue of making sure that you are positioning yourself as someone who is elite in your field, make sure that you can get great results for the people that you are working with and then price yourself appropriately 
When you get those things together, then you are able to make huge revenue leaps in your business when you focus on that one thing. One of the things I often like to say is that you don't need to sell a million things to make a million dollars. You just need to have one well-priced, well-positioned, high ticket offer that you can offer to the right audience. And with that, you can ride that one offer to six figures, to multi six figures, to seven and more. It is possible, but you have to make sure that you are valuing your genius at the level that it's deserved to be valued. Well, it's really interesting that you said that because I was uh, at a conference speaking to financial advisors and typically what we don't realize is that our own limiting beliefs can be, you know, it is sometimes what we're marketing or conveying. And you mm -hmm. said something that's critical that I want to make sure this audience gets, and that is your price conveys the value. Oh my right? God. And so, right? Oh my God, so much. And let me just say, this is one of the areas that I find particularly that Black women have hangups on. And I almost feel like it's because of the trauma that we've experienced, not even almost, I will go ahead and claim it. I believe it is because of the trauma that we have experienced in this labor market of being perpetually underpaid, literally, for centuries and not paid at all for centuries, for example, uh, that we really don't really get the value of our genius and what we have to offer. And even when we do, we are afraid to claim it because we assume no one will pay it. And what we are then doing is we are sabotaging our own success from the beginning. Like I shared at the beginning of this program, we know that we're gonna face wage discrimination in the workplace, that's nothing new. What's the biggest tragedy is to have your own business and underpay your damn self, right? That to me is the biggest tragedy. So really understanding what your value is and then also understanding that when you are offering your service to a potential client, they are assessing whether or not you can do the job. And fairly or not fairly, people associate price with quality. That is a fact. You will never walk into a Walmart expecting to find a Chanel purse. You know what you're going for when you get there, okay? And vice versa is the truth too, right? And so the last thing that you should even expect is to be able to attract Chanel buyers with Walmart pricing, okay? If you price yourself too lowly, people who are more than capable to pay more for what you offer will out of hand dismiss you because they will assume that you are not good at what you do, even though you may be better than someone that they are willing to pay twice as much, three times as much, four times as much for the same thing. And so what, what I really find and what's most frustrating to me is that when I meet someone who I know has the goods, who I know can deliver, who I know has all the things that one needs in order to price themselves at an elite level, but still they are attached to that Walmart pricing because they're afraid to ask for what they deserve. What they really don't understand is that they are undermining their own success in the process. This is not about getting your foot in the door. This is about finding those clients who look for quality and make sure that you position yourself in a way such that they can have access to you and they actually go ahead and uh, become your client because they believe that you can deliver based not only on your credentials, based not only on your the quality of what you do, but also on the pricing that conveys the elite status of what you have to offer. Well, you know, it's so interesting you say that because I believe, and the reason I wanted to get into the whole conversation around price conveys value is because I believe so many entrepreneurs are focused on time, right? Yeah. Time versus impact. And so they're pricing themselves based on the time that is that they're spending, let's just say with someone versus the impact or the return on that investment. So, mm -hmm. you know, case in point, uh, the we, it, because I do want to go back to results, because I do think there is a part of this whole conversation that we're hearing about entrepreneurship. You need your seven streams of income. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. you know, you go and take a course and then all of a sudden you're the expert in it. And that people <laughs> are kind of put off by that. Right. Yep. And so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about in terms of strategy, just what is something that an entrepreneur 
list who's saying, oh my goodness, she's exact. She, they're absolutely right. I'm not pricing myself correctly. And so in order for them to determine what their pricing should be, right? Mm -hmm. What should they, how do they convey the value that they create? Absolutely. So, you know, the first thing that I'm going to suggest is not very sexy, but it's a, it's a necessary part of the process. You definitely need to do some market research, figure out what other people in your industry are charging for what you are doing. And don't just, you know, necessarily compare yourself to everyone, compare yourself to, you know, those people who are at a level that you would like to be compared to figure out what they are offering, what their price points are, get a sense of the range. All right. And then when you are looking to position yourself in that space, there are a couple of things that you need to do. Number one, you need to make sure that you show up like you belong there, right? So I do believe that branding is very important. Branding is more than colors. It's more than what your website looks like. Uh, it's everything from your brand message. It's about what you stand for. It's about even the brand photos, how you show up on social media. It's about being able to take advantage of traditional media, like showing up on television, like being, being uh, published or being interviewed for publications. All of those things convey extra value to your brand as a person, your personal brand, and also the brand associated with your business, the brand that you're building. So all of those things are very, very important. And then I would say making sure that you're very clear about what your offer is and you're able to convey the value of it. Lastly, I would say making sure that you have uh, been able to collect information from people that you've worked with in the past, uh, what we call in the industry testimonials, like have people that uh, have worked with you before be able to shout from the rooftops about what a difference that you made by working with them. That also conveys the value of working with you. It shows people that you are the real deal. You're not one of these people that did, you know, take the course and all of a sudden you're claiming you're an expert. You actually have the receipts, as Whitney Houston would say. So make sure that you have those things in place at minimum. And that allows you to be able to confidently charge what you deserve because you know that you are competitive in the field. Do not feel bad about even going on the high end of that range. If you know you can deliver, be able to present and show up in a way that gives brand credibility and make sure that you allow uh, the opportunity for individuals that you work with to be showcased so that you can show that, hey, I can not only talk the talk, I can walk the walk. Woo! Now, excellent information. And you really left some gems there uh, that I hope our audience got. However, when we come back, it's enough uh, we, you dropped a lot of information here, but information is not power, right? Mm -hmm. Applied it. So when we come back, I want to go to the next part of our framework with, with, which is execution. If you're listening to this and you, it's resonating with you and you're saying, oh my goodness, I check all the boxes. Let's talk about what you need to do to really up net level and take your, uh, maybe side hustle to the next level. That's what we'll be covering when we come back. When we invest in ourselves, we're investing in what's next for all of us. Growing, creating, making moves that move us all forward. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure. Does it get better than never getting lost? Does it get better than not parallel parking yourself? Alexa, ask Smart Feed to feed the dog. Does it get better than feeding your dog from 50 miles away? Yes, it does. At Buick, we see a future that's even better. Because the life-enhancing innovations you've never even dreamed of, Buick is dreaming of them every day. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we are about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot 
tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. When we invest in ourselves, we all shine. Together, we are black beyond measure. Hope you are enjoying our conversation on Get Wealthy today. And it's all about you being able to scale your business and shift from that solopreneur uh, to a CEO. We've covered mindset, and that's the shift that you need to make, really saying, I deserve it. And we just talked about strategy. Strategy is understanding that the biggest impact could be you just increasing uh, the, the, the price on what you are offering. But now we want to get to execution. So Dr. Avis, man, I could see myself in my early stages. Uh, and, and so many of the things that you mentioned were exactly what I had to do in order to grow a uh, wealthy you. And so now I wanna talk about strategy. So to the point that I made, I'm sure that our audience is saying, me, 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 I checked all of those boxes. And one thing I, 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 I'm really uh, so happy that you brought up because it's the area that you're an expert in is branding and media. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the strategies that you use to really help women elevate their message and also the value that they're able to charge. So I want to go there in terms of strategy. If I'm listening to you right now, what are some of the first steps I need to take or what is the first step I need to take if I wanted to apply the thing that we're talking about that could possibly make the most impact? Oh, well, I'd say one of the first steps, particularly when it comes to branding, is I want you to get very clear about the message that your business is stands for. What do you stand for? Like for me, for example, my business is all about normalizing Black abundance. I want to make every Black family in America with have the ability to be able to say, hey, I can write all the checks I need to to make sure that my kids can go to college. I don't have to worry about whether or not they're going to forgive student loans. I can make sure that I can give my kids a down payment on the house. I can have the lifestyle that I want. And I want to help as many people as I can get there through the beauty of entrepreneurship. That's what I stand for with particular emphasis on Black women. So it's about really understanding your brand message because that's going to be a very powerful foundation for for any of the content, for example, that you produce on social media, for any of the interviews you might want to do or speak about, the lens from which you're going to, the angle from which you're going to take it when you do appear in the media, that's very important. I would also make say making sure that your brand image or your uh, photos on social media are things that convey professionalism, things that convey an individual who uh, can be expected to be paid at a high ticket level. You know, oftentimes we kind of forget about social media and sometimes we can be a little bit too uh, casual with it. And I just think being very intentional as an entrepreneur with making sure that you have images that reflect what you want the audience, your potential customers to think about you is very important. Just think about celebrities. There are no celebrities pretty much out there uh, that have images that are around on the internet for the most part, unless it was a paparazzi catch that they don't want you to see, for example. They, they, though their images are very specifically curated and um, selected for public consumption to convey a specific image that they wanna give across to their audience. You need to think the same way and be strategic about that as an entrepreneur. Uh, and then lastly, I would say the media really is 
open to a lot of people now, more than ever. Now is the best time ever to get into the media. There are so many opportunities out there because there are just so many more vehicles than there used to be. Everything from all sorts of streaming opportunities like at here at Black Star Network, as well as the traditional television, like your local morning news, cable news, uh, t podcasts, radio shows. There are ways that you can get visibility around what you do. And it's about being intentional about making use of those vehicles. Because once again, that's something that can lend extra credibility to your brand. So thinking about how you can do all of those things is great. But I would say just the very first one I would do, and probably the e easiest one, is to sort of clean up your social media or take a look at that to make sure that you are conveying the image of someone that people can values, their opinions, someone they can trust, and someone who is professional and really good at what they do. Oh, th thank you for that, because I do think that there is this thought in the uh, zeitgeist or out there that says, oh, you know, people want to see you as you are, and, you know, girl, just get up and just stay with us on, under your mind, and then you're real. So you really uh, shared what I believe is the insight that people need to understand about how their images impact, uh, yeah. how they're perceived. Well, here's the I, thing. I, I'm I just sorry. I have a question for you. Yeah. But uh -huh. uh, just to follow up on that. Yeah. So there's probably someone in this audience listening and saying, oh, you know, they're talking about media and we always see them in the media and they're experts. If I am someone who is maybe shy and w what are some of the things that I need to do to kind of get out of my shell so that I can represent my brand and leverage the media to do so? I think one of the lowest hanging fruits is publication. And there are certain publications that you can get into extremely easily, like something like Medium. There is no gatekeeper there. You can go and publish on Medium today if you wanted to and then distribute your article that you wrote uh, to as many people as you want. Uh, through social media, for example. And that gives you a lens of credibility because now you are technically published. You can even publish an article on LinkedIn, for God's sakes. I mean, there is no barrier to entry there. So I would say that's a great place. Uh, also, because today, quite frankly, everyone has a cell phone, everybody has pretty much a, a laptop, you can go live yourself on your own social media platforms or on your own YouTube channel and over time build a following. That is another viable way that you can just expand your visibility. And for a lot of people, honestly, building their own platform has been their segue into other more traditional media avenues. I mean, Issa Rae is just one example, right? You know, she didn't start off at HBO. She started out on YouTube as the awkward black girl. So it's, it's really about understanding that Right now, honestly, is the best time to take advantage of all of these opportunities that are out there because there are so many spaces that you really don't have to ask anyone to get into. If you don't want to, you can literally build it yourself, uh, as I just mentioned, or you can select specific outlets where there is low barrier to entry, maybe even down to no barrier to entry, like the publications that I just mentioned, that you can start to sort of establish your bona fides as a thought leader in your space by uh, collecting your thoughts, giving advice, giving tips, providing some thoughtful commentary on issues that you are an expert in. And that definitely helps to elevate your brand to a level uh, that it will be seen as other people, as someone that they can trust and would potentially want to buy from. You, you really conveyed the fact that there is such a low barrier to entry now. Before you had to be this published author, if you were gonna get on any uh, major television network, even locally as well. Mm -hmm. And now it's sort of like the gatekeepers are gone. Mm -hmm. So when we come back, I really wanna kind of synthesize our conversation that we had in, in our uh, and button this up as it relates to how someone can really uh, take advantage of the information that Dr. Avis shared and make that shift from a solopreneur to a full-fledged full, a full CEO by elevating their brand. So when we come back, it's our Analyze, Optimize, Maximize segment. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
hatred on the streets. A horrific scene. A white nationalist rally that descended into deadly violence. White people are losing their damn minds. As an angry pro-Trump mob storms the U.S. Capitol, we've seen shock. We're about to see the rise of what I call white minority resistance. We have seen white folks in this country who simply cannot tolerate black folks voting. I think what we're seeing is the inevitable result of violent denial. This is part of American history. Every time that people of color have made progress, whether real or symbolic, there has been what Carol Anderson at Emory University calls white rage as a backlash. This is the rise of the Proud Boys and the Boogaloo Boys. America, there's going to be more of this. Here's all the Proud Boys, guys. This country is getting increasingly racist in its behaviors and its attitudes because of the fear of white people. The fear that they're taking our jobs, they're taking our resources, they're taking our women. This is white fear. When we invest in ourselves, we're investing in what's next for all of us. Growing, creating, making moves that move us all forward. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure. Hit me. Listen to me now. Is you with me now? Then biggie, biggie bounce. I know you dig the way I switch my style. When we invest in ourselves, we all shine. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach, and I'm glad and I hope you've been enjoying our conversation with Dr. Avis today, all about helping you move from that side hustle to a full-fledged CEO. And so now it's time for our Analyze, Optimize, Maximize segment. And Dr. Avis, this is really designed for us to have people have like a, a snapshot, a takeaway, right? And so we covered a lot in Mindset Strategy at Execution. So if I'm gonna take this information specifically, what based on what we just said, how do I need to figure out first, what do, how do I analyze what we've just said today and apply it to my own individual opportunity? So what would you say to our audience? I would say the first thing is to figure out, particularly if you're a service-based entrepreneur, that honestly, that is my specialty, uh, then you need to figure out what is that one valuable high ticket offer that you can develop that specifically uh, systematizes your knowledge in a particular area to give an individual or organizations a particular result. If you're a consultant, if you're a coach, if you're someone that makes money from your knowledge, you can figure out what is something that you can offer at a high ticket level and then sell. Okay. So that's number, number one, you have to have something to sell. And then I also want you to know that once you get, you've gotten to that place where you are making consistent revenue, now it's time to think about maximizing your ability to scale. And the best way to do that is to bring on some additional team members. I oftentimes suggest that you can just start with just one hire, as an assistant, a virtual assistant, or a personal assistant, someone that can take some of those administrative tasks off your hand so that you can focus on those revenue generating activities. When you do that, you'll be able to make more money. And as you do that, you can be able to grow your team so you can even scale even higher. That's important to know. And let me just say that you don't have to be a full-time entrepreneur before you do that. I've had several clients who've been able to have six-figure and multi-six-figure side hustles, but they've been able to do that because they haven't tried to do everything themselves. They had to take the chance and believe in their dream enough to be able to at least bring on 
a little bit of help to get those things off of their shoulders that has to be done, but does not have to be done by then so that they can focus on their zone of genius and in the process, bring in more revenue to the company. And then thirdly, lastly, I would just say, make sure that you get out there and be known. I mean, the bottom line is if nobody knows you're in business, you are not in business. So you have to make sure that you are marketing yourself every day. Balance, um, business is a balance of both marketing and sales. If you are not marketing first, you will have nobody to sell to. So you have to make sure that you kind of get out of your comfort zone and go out there aggressively each and every day to let potential customers know that yes, you are in business. Yes, you have wonderful things to offer. And yes, you would be a great, a great find if they were lucky enough to work with you. That's what you have to make the commitment to do and do it each and every day. Well, confidence is key, but I want to make sure that uh, our our viewers heard something that you said because it was magical to me and really responsible for the, the success that we've had in Wealthy You. And that's that systemization process, right? Mm -hmm. Because that really is optimization. And so, you know, just from the standpoint of optimization, like where does some someone start Avis to figure out how to codify, right? Mm -hmm. Their, their process that their genius so that then they can transfer it to someone else and it not necessarily them being in it to make it happen. Yeah. Well, you know, it kind of reminds me of, it's a quote by Napoleon Hill. It's not knowledge that makes you wealthy. It's organized knowledge that makes you wealthy. Right. And so it's really about you thinking about how do I get the results for my clients? I think sometimes we kind of operate on autopilot when we are, an, when we really are an expert in the space, we just go in there and do, okay. It's really about you taking a step back and reverse engineering how you do what you do and figuring out those steps so that it can be replicated time and time again. Once you are able to determine your replicatable process, that then is your system that you can value appropriately and then sell to others in, in mass in order to grow your business in a way that doesn't really leave you overwhelmed because you are focused on just replicating the same things over and over again, instead of reinventing the wheel each and every time you have a new client or customer. Genius. I mean, if they didn't get that, Jim, I don't know what to tell them. And then finally, you know, the last thing I, I want to say, and it, it it's direct, it's in relation to what you just stated, and it's the curse of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I want to challenge this belief that I know many people have, and I did too. And it wasn't until I was able to uh, let go so I could grow, right? that mm -hmm. I really saw results. And so to that end, the gift of knowledge, I mean, the curse of knowledge, when you believe, oh, no one could ever do it, like I do it. What do you say to that? It's a lie from the pit of hell. Okay, <laughs> let go of that, release, release yourself of that belief. Because here, here's the reality, you know, when we all start out in business, you are everything in your business, quite frankly, because when you first start off in business, you have more time than you have money, right? Because you're trying to get those first customers. So you are doing everything. You you are the mark, lead marketer. You are the salesperson. You are the brand person. You are every everything, everything, right? But there becomes an inflection point in your business where you are basically are at a space where you cannot take on any more work. If you find yourself at a place in your business where you cannot handle one more client or where you having you're having opportunities to work and you're just saying no I can't do that because I'm at capacity guess what you have now hit a wall in your business now you have more money than you have time so when you get to that place where you have more money than you have time you must have other people come into your business to take some things off your plate so that you can now bring in more money what you will find when you do that is guess what you are not an expert at all things there are things that maybe you can do but trust and believe there are people out there who that's their zone of genius. So why not hire people who have a zone of genius in some place that maybe you can do it, but quite frankly, if you would be honest with yourself, it really is not your zone of genius. Let somebody else do that. They will do it even better than you can do it, which guess what? It becomes an asset for your business, right? And it frees up your time to focus more on that thing that you are absolutely amazing at. So 
really, to me, that is the biggest secret sauce. And I understand that it's scary for some people because that does involve an investment in team. But let me tell you, that is an investment that will really literally pay itself back over and over again. And that's what frees up your time and allows you to make more money at the same time. Yes. You can't, you do not have to do it all. It's not the how, it's the who, who can get you there so much faster. Dr. Avis, your brilliance, it always shines. And I hope that uh, our viewers feel the same way that I do about you and just the amount of insight. You know, there's information and there's insight and you gave us plenty of that today, but I want to make sure they know how to get in contact with you uh, and all that you do in the world so that they can scale and make their shift. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Well, I definitely want to invite people to check out BlackCoachMillionaireLive.com. That is an event that I have coming up that's going to be sharing exactly how to be able to de define their $1 million offer and also their marketing plan and all that. So you can get information there about me and my team and all of that, uh, as well as dravismentoring.com, which is my brand new website that will be launching in about a week or so. So we're excited about being able to see you there as well. Outstanding. Well, as usual, uh, your knowledge and your insight uh, is uh, sure to help our audience get wealthy. And they certainly got a return on their investment of their time because they got a lot of your talent. So thank you so much for coming on, Dr. Avis. Thank you for having me. Excellent. Well, folks, when we come back, the three takeaways that you should have from today's show. When we invest in ourselves, we're investing in what's next for all of us. Growing, creating, making moves that move us all forward. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure. Hi, I'm Dr. Jackie Hood Martin, and I have a question for you. Ever feel as if your life is teetering and the weight and pressure of the world is consistently on your shoulders? Well, let me tell you, living a balanced life isn't easy. Join me each Tuesday on Black Star Network for a balanced life with Dr. Jackie. We'll laugh together, cry together, pull ourselves together, and cheer each other on. So join me for new shows each Tuesday on Black Star Network, a balanced life with Dr. Jackie. Transmission. Features available on GMC Sierra Heavy Duty. Premium and capable. That's professional grade from GMC. When we invest in ourselves, our glow, our vision, our vibe, we all shine. Together, we are black beyond measure. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach, and I hope you enjoyed our conversation today. So here are your the three things you need to take away from today's show. First off, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. Secondly, people do business with people they like, know, and trust. So you've got to get out there and make your message her, have your message heard and known. And finally, it's your difference that makes a difference. So make sure, as Dr. Eva said, that you identify that one thing that you can do that cre can create the most value for others. So thanks so much for coming on Get Wealthy. I'm Deborah Owens, right here on Get Wealthy, only on Black Star Network.
When we invest in ourselves, we all shine. Together, we are black beyond measure. Does it get better than never getting lost? Does it get better than not parallel parking yourself? Alexa, ask Smart Feed to feed the dog. Does it get better than feeding your dog from 50 miles away? Yes, it does. At Buick, we see a future that's even better. Because the life-enhancing innovations you've never even dreamed of, Buick is dreaming of them every day. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. 